guest, a Super Bowl champion, four-time Pro Bowler. Nothing can go wrong for this man right now. One of the founding blocks of that Patriots dynasty and someone who saw the Northern Lights on some sort of psychedelic? Psych psychedelic? I could, so, yeah, yeah. I, I, I can neither confirm nor deny whether we were on psychedelics, but I will tell you that the uh, Northern Lights were, uh, they were making us feel like we were on drugs, whether we were or not. True, but so what was that really like? Did it, was it like moving? Like people like, connect to the eclipse in that way? I went to Iceland twice and they eluded me. Yeah, no, I mean, it was, I don't know. I don't think it, I, it, I, it was very, very cool. But we, you know, we live up in Montana. We've seen the Northern Lights quite a few times, oh. but this was just, this, this show was just like an, an 11. It was like being in a friggin' IMAX it was crazy. It was, it was cool. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it, it changed my life. That was more the psychedelics that did that. You're. You're. <laughs> I love talking to you. It has been so fun to watch you in these interviews. But it's all roast, no football. So I'm gonna. I want to get into some football here. But more importantly than any of that, how's business right now? What are sales like it's at good. the old, at yeah, the old Bledsoe good. Family Wines? Yeah, it's good. We've got a we've got an amazing team, you know, from our crew that works in the vineyards all the way through the entire thing. And, and you know, it's it's I compare it a lot of times to being a quarterback, you know, where I, I get to take a lot of credit for this thing. Um, but I have a ton of people that are doing the real work and, and uh, they're just absolute rock stars. So, yeah, I mean, it's you know, the economy's tough and so on. So we maybe have to fight a little bit harder. But our but our team is absolutely kicking ass. If Tom Brady was one of your wines, which wine would he be? I don't know. I mean, he's such a dork these days. It might have to be some sort of non-alcoholic, like fake grape juice wine with avocados or some stupid shit like that. I, he, um, um, or I don't know. He'd probably be just like some. Well, he's from California, so he'd be some like heavily overpriced Napa Cabernet. God, I love you, Drew. Uh, true or false? The alcohol or the drink that Brady was drinking was a fake. You know, I, I know that um, there was a full bottle of tequila sitting, you know, with Kevin and Gronk and, and Tommy, and uh, mm. it was mostly gone at the end. Now, obviously, we all know that Gronk could probably take it down by himself. Uh, but no, I think there was some tequila flowing for him. Yeah, I don't. I don't somehow I don't, I don't believe that. So the roast happened. Uh, you have obviously were killing it. It's like now pop culture, iconic stuff that you were a part of. You went there. I saw you on Julian's podcast. You kind of set the tone for the players having to go and compete against these comedians. Uh, sitting here like a, a, a week out, so, you know, you're at this party at the comedy store, I heard. Everyone's there but Tom Brady. Who was walking around most uh, upset about the jokes that were flung their way? Probably me. Sam Jay was really mean to me. Uh, she hurt my feelings. Um, but uh, uh, no, nah, it was, I mean, it was so fun. Um, it was very nerve wracking, I'll be honest. Um, you know, especially having to go first and, you know, you got all these people watching and, and you're trying to do comedy, something that, um, you know, never done live and in front of people before. So it was pretty nerve wracking. Um, the uh, the funny thing is, I was just talking uh, with some friends yesterday. You know, you know when you, like you're at the grocery store and somebody like bumps you or whatever, and, you, and then like two hours later, you're like, oh, I should have said, you know, this. And uh, man, I've been going through so many bits that that, uh, that, I wish, that I wish I had done. Um, that would have been yeah, would have been really fun. Like what? Uh, I was gonna, you know, I was gonna, you know, when I when I said that I hated Tom. I was going to, I could have gone like up and I could have kind of gone up and down the line and said, you know, I hate Tom Brady, you know, like Burt Kreischer hates salad. I hate Tom Brady, like Nikki Glazer hates fully digesting her food. Oh my God. Uh, I, you know, I, I hate Tom Brady, like, you know, um, what was the other one? Oh, I was going to, oh, I was going to go, I was gonna, actually, this one was my, this was my favorite one. This is my one that I, I would have killed to go back. Um, oh, hold on. Um, was it? Oh, I hate uh, I hate Tom Brady like Andrew Schultz Barber hates him. Oh my god! You got that haircut that's awful. But then I was going to turn to Julian. I was going, to, Julian, have you really looked at this guy? Because you should be terrified. <laughs> he looks like AI printed Hitler's great grandson. Oh gosh! Like all I'm doing, all I'm saying, Julian, is if he invites you to go on a train ride, don't go. Oh my gosh, Drew, you you came up with these? Those are yeah. Those are those. Those are the ones. Those are the bits I should have done. And I and I yeah. Because then then maybe Nikki and I could both be getting our flowers as you know. I feel like don't you, you don't you feel like you're getting your flowers? 
I totally am, and I'm totally kidding. Oh. I just, you know, the 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 the, the, hi the highlight of the night, obviously, and it was so cool. Um, was was Nikki Glaser. Yes. And the cool thing is, like at the after party, she is the sweetest, kindest, you know, nicest person. You know, introduces me to her boyfriend that she told that incredibly awful joke about. Uh, and I'm like, dude, sorry. He goes, yeah, no, we've been dating for ten years. This is what I signed up for. So funny. Uh, but uh, yeah, she absolutely killed, and and uh, I think you know she was already having a successful career, but now she's she's on to great stardom. Drew, it sounds like you wanna you want a round two. Yeah, I'm hoping to get invited back. You know, we'll see. Um, I don't know who they're who they're doing next. Somebody there, somebody there was some rumor. I, I think it was just total total fake rumor, but that that Tiger Woods was going to go do one, um, which number one I wouldn't be invited to. Number two. Man, I don't think he can do that. There's too much material. I mean, he's already been raked over the coals. I just, I don't, but I, I don't know. Like, who, who, I feel like you could come back, Drew. I feel like it. Even who, do you, who, do you, who do you think, they, who do you think they should roast next? Jordan. Oh yeah, there's a lot of material there too. Peyton Manning, I, but not, you don't want to go back. There's, you know, it's gotta be not football. Mess, I mean, messy, I feel like wouldn't be that funny. Right, right. Uh, so yeah, yeah, I would Jordan, say that. I, I, Serena. I, I'd buy tickets to go to Jordan because you know Barkley and Shaq would be there, yes. and I'd pay I'd pay a lot to just watch those two talk about. They're doing you know, they're doing just, Jordan now. If you were to you know because there's a lot of like oh t you know Tom left the party and Tom like there was like all these jokes that were and then you have all the tabloidy stuff about everything, like if you're if if you're talking to Tiger Woods or Michael Jordan, are you saying like if you're sitting with them drinking some some blood so wine, are you saying you have to do this? It was incredible, like it was. Or or was it, you know, like, would Tom do it again, I guess, is what I'm asking you. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, you know, the, the funny thing is, like, Tom took some abuse, but, you know, it was it was like Giselle took a lot of abuse. And, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, I think Gronk maybe took more jokes than Tom did, uh, you know. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I think he had fun. I don't know. I didn't get to I didn't get to visit with him. We exchanged exchanged messages afterwards. Number one message from me was like, dude, I'm so glad that your mother was not there. Because uh, we, we were we were all told that Tom's mom was going to be there uh, for, for the roast, which maybe was strategic to keep, Probably. You know, keep the jokes a little more tame, but it didn't work. Um, uh, so, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I you know, I feel like you got to be able to laugh at yourself um, and, and laugh at your uh, laugh at your screw ups. So um, I don't think there's much downside to it. As long as, as long as you know, there were only a few rules, right? And and one of which was broken. I think everybody knows which one that was. Mm -hmm. There was not supposed, not supposed to be any craft jokes about the thing. Um, and then um, uh, and then obviously you can't go kids, you know. But other than that, every, everything was on board, and uh, you know. And so uh, the, the the hardest part, the hardest part to me in deciding whether you're going to do that would be how you know what's what age are your kids, you know? Because if they're <laughs> If they're really young, then then you know they're not going to know anything happen. Right. And if they're grown ups, then they're like, okay, this is the real world. I've already read all this stuff online. But if they're kind of in that tween, you know, teenage years where maybe you've kept them sheltered from some of the stuff that's gone on, um, you know, that would be pretty hard. How you try as hard as you want to, they're going to see it. Yeah, you you're, you and Brady's relationship sort of fascinates me because there's you know there's a lot a lot there. What would you mm -hmm. say is, was there like a story or a moment that he sort of, he either won you over or you got over it or whatever? Like, cause it's a lot of it's warranted, a lot of it's humanity, a lot. Like what is the, what was the, the story of the turning point, I guess, where you're like well, roasting him and loving him? There was never a problem directly mm -hmm. between the two of us. We always had great respect, but that's just hard. When somebody takes yeah. your job, you know, that's hard. Um, okay, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a story. This was, this was, this was, this was a cool story and it was really meaningful to me. Um, it was a number of years ago. We were skiing in Montana and uh, happened to uh, bump into to Tom up on the on the slopes. <laughs> and um, obviously, we were skiing different places because he can't ski for shit. But uh, <laughs> but but, uh, but but I was talking to him a little bit. And so at the end of the day, I had to take a phone call. And I'm sitting up. I'll try to make this short. But I was sitting up in the middle of the mountain, you know, on this phone call. And I ski down, and I'm getting down to the bottom. There's nobody else left on the on the mountain well i can see tom because i could tell which one he was because he was wearing this just terrible under armor outfit and um, there's somebody that's with him that's obviously female so I, I know that's giselle but i'd never met her i'd never met giselle and so i came in hot and i was going to come in and spray tom 
Well, of course, as I come in to spray him, I miss and I just covered Giselle with snow. And we've never met. Oh my God. And so Tom looks at me like he's, it's go time. Like, you know, you don't mess with my wife. Um, and, uh, or at least back then you didn't, the, the, uh, the, uh, <laughs> but the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, but the, uh, um, you're on fire. But the, but I know, but I came in hot and I sprayed Giselle and Tom looks at me, he's like, Tom, it's true. It's true. And, um, and so, Hey, sorry, Giselle, nice to meet you. And she leans over and she gives me this great big hug. Right. Uh -huh. Like great big hug. And, and, um, then later that we, you know, when we see them at dinner and, uh, Giselle says to me, she goes, you know, I normally don't give people big hugs when I first meet them, <laughs> but you don't understand how you're talked about in our house. Um, which was, you know, just an incredibly cool and very genuine, um, compliment. So there's just, you know, there's always, there's always great mutual respect between the two of us. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we haven't gotten to hang out. I mean, that was, that was the last time we actually got to hang out and that was a number of years ago. Um, but we, you know, exchange messages. One of these days we'll get to sit down and uh, drink some wine and chop it up. I think it's very, very cool. But, and what a great story. And shout out to Giselle for, for all Absolutely. of that. And I mean, she's, a, I, she's an absolute sweetheart, by yeah. the way. I only got to spend time with her, you know, right, right there. I, I, I did feel bad. She took a lot of punches and she wasn't there to defend herself. Yeah. And maybe, maybe she should come back and, uh, she should do something. We should do something for Giselle. Okay. We, we, we'll, we'll talk to Netflix, you and me, and figure that out. Um, let's talk a little football here. Drake May, third overall to the Patriots. There's the uh, should he, shouldn't he start week one conversation already in full effect. Uh, the expectations, if you look at the sports book stuff, not very high for Drake May for the entire team. Um, but sort of like, I would just like to get into maybe your thoughts um, on him. Like, do you think it would have been better for you to sit at the beginning of your rookie season? Yeah, you know, it's always a dilemma, right? Um, you know, because when you're drafted that high, you know, by definition, you're going to a team that's not very good. Um, you know, it's sort of the, the, um, I, I guess, catch 22, maybe there's the right word where you're, or whatever the, whatever the right word is, you know, yeah, cool. Woo, drafted really high. Uh, now it means you're going to a bad team. And especially as a quarterback, that's hard. Um, I preferred to play and, and kind of, you know, learn by being under fire. Um, I think you can make a case, you know, um, for either decision. And I think it's really going to come down to how he looks in training camp. And, and if, if he looks like he's ready uh, to go and then, you know, and I don't know, I don't know Drake, but then it comes down to, okay, what's his mental makeup? Can he weather the storm of getting knocked around and not having success early without shaking his confidence? Um um, or is it going to be better for him to, to, you know, to sit and, and, and watch for a little bit? One thing that he has that's very, very significant going for him is Alex Van Pelt. So yeah. Alex, Alex was, uh, we were, we were together in Buffalo for a few years. Um, and you know, no disrespect to Zoe, um, Alex was from a backup standpoint, he was the one that had the best football mind. And he also has just this incredibly calm demeanor. Um, he played quarterback in the league for a decade and, uh, you know, he's six foot and chubby. Um, so obviously he had to win with his brain otherwise. And so I, I really think that, that, uh, that Alex is one of those special, you know, quarterback whisperer kind of dudes that's, that's really going to help him. So I, I, you know, I think that they'll, they'll take all factors into account, you know, one, you know, what's our best chance to win right now, but also, you know, what's best for this kid's long-term future and therefore the future of the franchise in making those decisions. Yeah, it was even just, there was an article this morning, I'm glad you brought him up because the new OC, so everybody knows, like he's uh, allegedly, he's the lead guy. It's gonna be like him and Drake, Drake May hand in hand. And I love that we're getting the Drew Bledsoe like cosign of that as being a huge deal. I did, when uh, Alex was, he was at the, the Bengals and he was at the Browns. Mm -hmm. When he was with Baker. the Browns during during COVID, they they were doing all these Zoom meetings, and and he you know he texted me he goes dude I'm running out of material for these Zoom meetings would you come on and do, you know and just sit in my quarterback meeting and I'm like yeah absolutely, and uh, and the one thing I told him it was Baker Mayfield and a bunch of those guys and I go guys look you have to listen to this guy, because he played a decade as an NFL quarterback and look at him. <laughs> yeah, it's, it was not because of his physical ability, um, but he's uh, he's a great guy and uh, and, a, and a really brilliant football mind. And, and he's uh, 
Um, you know, I believe that he'll he'll find he'll find a way with the, even with the limited weapons they have, he'll find a way to get them moving. How much do you think, earnestly? How much do you think Tom benefited from sitting behind you? That Giselle story mm. is kind of all I need to hear. But from your perspective, and sort of, I mean, it's true. Like that's you know, and you look at Mahomes and Alex Smith, and like you were mm. a mentor to him, and yeah. you know. I just want to know, like, how yeah, much? Yeah, you know, I, I think it, it depends on who that who that mentor right. is. Um, you know, Far famously said it wasn't his job to mm -hmm. it wasn't his job to to teach Aaron Rodgers. Um, you know, I was an open book, um, and Tom was a, he was a great student. Like he he was in my hip pocket all the time. You know, asking questions. You know, why'd you go there? Why'd you do this? What would you know? What was that? And uh, and of course, I shared that information with him because I did not perceive him as a threat. <laughs> you know, which I was wrong. Um, but uh, uh, you know, so I. I but um, you know, I think that that he he's got uh, you know he's got Alex um, and he's got uh, he's got Jacoby. Jacoby's still there, right? I I have not looked, um, but I think Jacoby's is, a guy yeah. that would be a great great. So I think Jacoby's a guy that would be a great mentor, and he can also Jacoby can really play. So. Um, and you know, and Zappy's still there. So I mean, they, they've got some guys. It's not like if you know, if Drake May's not on the field, they're just throwing some dude off the street in there. Um, you know, they've got some guys that can play um, if they want to let him um, sit and rest for a little bit. And then it's really up to him if he's in that role where he's learning to do the learning, like you know, mm. to really pay attention to what you're seeing, what you're watching, to ask all the questions. Um, and again, I don't know him, but uh, but if he's uh, if he's really going to embrace that role, he's got to embrace that role really hard and 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 learn as much as he can. I love having Brissette there, a guy who can yeah. absolutely ball, and somebody who maybe needs to give you a call and, and drink some wine with you and get some advice on how to be a mentor for this young guy. Drake May's getting comps to you. Have you seen that? But people are saying he's more athletic than you are. What do you think of no, that? That's a pretty low bar. Come on. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> I wasn't exactly Lamar Jackson out there running around, uh, uh, but uh, he, uh, yeah, I, I think I'm, I think I'm. We were at the Super Bowl together. I, I've got him by a couple inches. I'm a little taller than he is, um, so I've got that at least. Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, no, I'll be. I, you know, obviously, I'll be super curious to watch. But uh, I am bullish on his future. Just I know he's a very talented kid, um, but more importantly, man, he's got the right guy uh, at the helm. Um, I was extremely excited about the Gerard Mayo hire. Yeah. Um, we got to spend time. We went to, with Mr. Kraft to, uh, to Israel a few years back, and I got to spend a week uh, with Gerard. Um, and, man, just love the dude. I know the players love him, um, and I, I think he's going to do a heck of a job. So they've got all the right pieces in place. Uh, you know, from that standpoint, coaches, quarterback, you know, uh, you know uh, all those situations. Now they got to put some, some more of these pieces uh in place around them. And I, you know, I heard you talking earlier that, you know, Hey, we got to be a little bit patient here. And I think we do have to have some patience, which is obviously one of the, um, historically, uh, great attributes of Boston sports fans is their patience. So, so, uh, uh, so we'll, we'll, but, uh, but, you know, Hey, you know, you're going to be a little patient here. Uh, this is not going to happen overnight. Um, but I do think they have great pieces in place. Drew, so what's next for you? You know Gerard May, or are you coming, you helping coach? Like, if he wants you to come talk to to young May, are you in? Are you flying there? Are you, like, just settled in? Are you loving life in Montana, and until they pick up the phone and ask you to come roast Tiger Woods, you're, you're good? What's next for Drew Bledsoe? You know, um, yeah, I'd love to. You know, um, you know, I have to be at the end of the summer. You know, I, I did training camp for all those years, and now summer's, summer's my time. Um, but, uh, I did go sit in one of the quarterback meetings, uh, with Alex when I was out there last, but it was before the draft, um, uh, and sat there and, and, um, uh, hung out with the guys a little bit. Yeah, no, I'd, I'd, I'd love to, you know, if they, if they reach out, I'd, I'd love to come out for, for camp and come out and, um, but you know, I already gave Alex all of my knowledge and, and, uh, so he has that second hand, but, uh, if they just need it. If they need it presented in a funnier way, then I'll, I'll come out there. I hope everybody is hearing the great Drew Bledsoe talk about the importance of Alex and this combo with him and Drake May. So excited that you're excited. It means a lot, honestly. Uh, and I think, I mean, their odds to, like, win the division are plus 2,400. Like, they could, they, you know, Aaron, Aaron can't have much left, huh? 40 Achilles? <laughs> 
I don't know. Maybe he'll play four plays this year. You know, oh double it up. Oh my god! Uh, the, 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 uh, uh, the, um, um, yeah, I mean, Buffalo is still going to be good, even though they gave away all of their weapons. Uh, <laughs> the Dolphins, the Dolphins are going to be really tough. Um, you know, I think that they, um, you know, they're. I think they're going to be pretty special. You're pretty um, special. You you're on fire still. You were like still. People are catching strays left and right. I will. I want to stay on your good side. Um, so <laughs> I appreciate you, and I would like to plug your wine. If you want to become a member, you want to enjoy the fantastic wines. Yeah. Go to BledsoFamilyWinery.com, and he hit us with a little trick. You're on a Zoom call. You're talking to your boss. Fill this thing up with some Bledsoe wine, and and feel good. I, I saw I saw you talking about being stoned on some Instagram posts. I was like, who is this man? Well, I, that was secondhand smoke. I would, I would never actually inhale. You know that. Um, I, I do know that. I know that about yeah. you, Drew. Um, no, yeah, we were, uh, yeah, we were out at uh, Julian. uh, Julian's, Julian's house uh, doing the uh, the the podcast, and one of his buddy picks one of his buddies picks up a ball, and, and next thing you know, you know, boys, Julian playing play catch, which you know that's pretty fun. It's still, it's it'll, it'll still work. It takes a little bit longer to, to get warmed up these days, but but uh, but it, it still it still goes. Um, <laughs> We got to take a break. I so appreciate you coming on the show. I know you've been doing a lot of uh, of media, but I'm glad you're getting the wine uptick. And you got to roast Tiger. You got to roast Jordan. They, if they were to keep, they got to keep you. You and Nikki. You and Nikki should just be. You guys could go uh, do like the tour, uh, and just roast people from town to town. I think uh, I think we'd have a lot of fun. I think we'd have a lot of fun. We'd just go travel around and just embarrass whoever needs to be embarrassed. The great Drew Bledsoe, who sees the Northern Lights when no one else does, three times, four times, five times up there in Montana. You live a great life, Drew. Cheers to you.